Good morning. Uh, today I want to introduce our works in the past eight years on the Pindong earthquake initiated uh, debris fraud. And uh, we try to figure out where and how was the debris fraud initiated. And of course, we will try to know uh, why it initiated at this place. Uh, in this slide, we show the uh, the epicenter of the Pindong earthquake doublet, which occurred on 26 December 2006, and of course uh, included its um, their aftershocks, uh, which magnitude larger than five uh, in the couple of days, uh, in the last couple of days, and you can find that for most of this uh, for most of this uh, earthquakes, which occurred at the end of the Fengliang uh, submarine uh, submarine canyon. And after the earthquake, we can, uh, there's a, a series of uh, the cable breakages uh, from the shallow waters uh, into the deep waters. <clears throat> and in this figure, we can see that for most of the cable breakages were occurred uh, in the uh, Gopin Canyon, Fangliu Canyon, and through the middle part of the Gopin Canyon into the north terminus of the uh, Maria Trench. So under this, uh, uh, in, in, in these conditions, we, we know that many previous uh, studies that point out that the Gopin and the Fangliu Submarine Canyon are the major transport conduit of the sediment-laden Great Falls, which triggered by the Pindong earthquake. But we know the path, and we know how it's transport, but we still not know where is the major, uh, major seafloor failure uh, occurred and we don't know what mechanism triggers such kind of the uh, such kind of the, the uh, uh, debris flows. So uh, in this study, we try to integrate uh, our results from the co-analysis, including we have the money sensor co log data, uh, the S radiograph, the grain size data, and also the lecture ten. And we also have the chirp sonar profiles in this area. We also have the side scan sonar images and also the multi beam base matrix. And we try to use the radon as a tracer to trace uh, if there has any um, some groundwater discharge from this area. So we try to integrate all these data to try to find out what happened during the uh, Pindon earthquake. Uh, this slide shows uh, the basic uh, composition of the sediment uh, at the offshore of the uh, southwestern Taiwan. And you can see for most areas, uh, the slates will be uh, dominant in the, Gulping, in the upper reach of the Gulping Canyon and the Fangliu Submarine Canyon and also the lower reach of the Gulping Submarine Canyon. But you can see for the other place, especially in the uh, upper slope of the Gulfing slope and uh, the, middle ch uh, the middle ridge of the Gulfing Summer Canyon, they are mainly composed by the very fine sealed quartz. Uh, usually the slates can be indicated, the source of the sediment will be coming from the central range of the, uh, in, 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 in the Taiwan Central Range area. So, and besides, we can find that uh, from our core data, we can find that only the calls collected uh, from the uh, Fangliu Summit Canyon that have the uh, thick, uh, the bright, and the turbidized layers, including from the head of the uh, Fangliu Summit Canyon to the uh, middle part and the, to the uh, lower part of the Fangliu Basin and also to the deep sea of the, uh, at the low ridge of the Gulfing Submarine Canyon. But we find that uh, in the deep sea part, we find that a, a very, a very uh, interesting course we collected uh, in last year at the uh, first cruise of the scientific cruise uh, for Taurus OR5 uh, new vessels. And uh, we found that at the cold top of this course, which collected at the maiden ridge, we find there's a very, very thick, um, not very thick, but at least uh, around 
30 centimeters thickness of the uh, turbidite layers at this place. And the thickness that larger than uh, the sediment accumulated in the past 150 years in this, in this place. And uh, from the grain size data, we also can separate this layer into two parts. And we think that for the uh, upper part can be representative of the more record typhoon events. And uh, for the lower part, we think that it uh, can be represented the Pinton earthquake uh, debris flows which deposited in this area. And from the topography of, of this ridge, we can see that it's higher than the surrounding area more than 500 meters. That means uh, the tapetic currents at this area, that the thickness or the height of the tapetic current should be higher than 500 meters. That means we have a tapetic current that's higher than the Taipei 101, which was uh, once was the highest uh, building in the world. So where is the smoking guns in, uh, for the for the for the uh, debris flows in, uh, after the Pinon earthquake. Uh, last year, we have tried to uh, conduct a cruise uh, by uh, doing the uh, doing the side scan sonar images here, and we find at the east part of the former Summer Canyon Head, there is uh, uh, you can you can find there's uh, overflow structures, which with uh, the finger type uh, structures here. And we think this may be uh, uh, this may be kind of representative of the liquefaction uh, phenomena during the uh, Pinot earthquake. Uh, besides, we also collected a, a, a course a couple of years ago at this at this location, and from this course we find that there has a very thick, uh, very thick uh, bright and uh, the turbidite layers in this course. And the, the thickness of this uh, part is around, I think, around 60 centimeters. So in this year, we, uh, by using the uh, Oris uh, over five vessels, we, we conducted the multi-beam basimetric uh, surveys in this area. And we find, yes, our, 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 uh, our suspicions about the liquefied uh, process probably happened here. Especially you can see uh, at this area, there has a depression area uh, at the east side of the uh, final summer in Kenyan. And uh, you can see here is the first cable breakage after the Pinton earthquake. And this is the core which we collected that have the debris and the, uh, the thick debris and the turbidite layer cores at this area. From the chirp sonar profiles, we also can see there's a wipeout uh, uh, images at the top of the uh, of, of, of the uh, depre uh, depression areas, and uh, you can see there's uh, we, you can see there's some funnel structures at the end at the end of the uh, wipeout layers, and uh, we think this is maybe representative of the sediment liquefaction structures here. So according to our best metrics data, we have calculated uh, the zero depression areas around 10.62 uh, square kilometers. The liquefied volume is around um, 280 million uh, cubic meters. And the mass mass depression depth is around 40 meters uh, at this area. And, but the problem is all the survey data are after the Pinton earthquake. So is this uh, depression area can representative uh, or it occurred immediately after the Pinto earthquake or it's an old depression area here. Fortunately, we have uh, some profiles, chips profiles before and after the Pinto earthquake at this area. Uh, for the 011785, which we have uh, done the surveys at the early of the two, the year of 2006. And after the Pinot earthquake, we do the same uh, chirp lines at the same place. And you can find, uh, indeed, they'll have some depression, new depression areas that 
the differences between the uh, before and the after the pinot earth crack. So yes, these depressions occurred after the pinot earth crack. But our problem is why the question, uh, why the liquefaction uh, process will be occurred at the head of the founder of Spring Canyon. Actually, in our previous uh, studies, we find that uh, at the offshore of the southeastern Taiwan, there's a lot of default, the pot mark structures, and also the liquefaction structures. And we think that maybe this area is potentially easy uh, liquefied uh, area in, uh, of the southwestern Taiwan. So also from our uh, from our uh, side scan sonar images, we also can see uh, some plumes, some gaseous plumes that gas from the sea floor at the head of the Final Submarine Canyon. So we try to understand why there are some, so many fluid that's coming out from the sea floor. So we have done, we decided to do some uh, radon surveys in this area. And you can see for, uh, for the results of the radon in the surface seawaters, uh, yes, indeed, you can see there's a lot of uh, the, the larger activities of the radon in our, in our study areas here, that's where the depression areas. And also in the near shore area, we also can find some submarine discharge signals here. And especially, this phenomena will be uh, especially easy to occur during, the after the wet, uh, during or after the wet seasons of the southwestern Taiwan. So, our conclusions are, first, the Pinton Earth crack triggered the debris flows uh, and brought vast amount of the sediment from the head of the Final Submarine Canyon through the middle and the lower reach of the Gulf Submarine Canyon to the north terminus of the Manila Trench. And that this part is well documented for, from many previous studies here. And secondly, the liquefaction during the Pinton Earth crack caused the depression of the seafloor at the east part of the head of Final Submarine Canyon. And according to the multi beam basimetric data, the seafloor depression area is around 11 square kilometers, and that the liquefied seafloor volume is, about, uh, is uh, 280 million cubic meters. And the amount of the, uh, the volume here is about the same magnitude of the landslide volume during the Moreca typhoon in Gulfing rivers. And, uh, in this area, the maximum depression depth is around 40 meters. We combining all the core analysis, geophysical survey, and the geochemical results, uh, the submarine groundwater discharge may play an important role on providing potential liquefied uh, environment. The high seismic acceleration after great earthquake trigger liquefaction process and increase the instability of the sea flow induced large scale debris flow and uh, caused a series of submarine cable breakages offshore the southern Taiwan. Thank you. <laughs> oh, by the way, uh, the research is funded by the uh, Ministry of the uh, Science and Technology in Taiwan, and we also want to thank the help from the FAST teams and uh, the uh, Taiwan Ocean Research Centers and also the Seismic Exploring Lab in the Institute of Oceanography. Thank you.